Welcome to Root Stem, and in this video we're going to show you how to paint this shock attack gun. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. If you do enjoy the video, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you do want to see more. And on today's video, we've got a bit of a classic. We've got an Orc Shock Attack Gun. The model's not a bit of a classic, but the unit is. I remember these units coming out in second edition and being really annoyed when we used to be able to take out Terminators in one shot without you even rolling a saving throw. Um, not like that nowadays, but hey ho. This is a quite it's a multi-part plastic model from Games Workshop. And as you can see, I've kept certain sections separate. The reason I've kept certain sections separate is because we are going to be using airbrush techniques uh, on quite a few of these, mainly just so we can actually get some speed. We're also going to be using some various different dry brushing techniques. And of course, this thing is definitely going to need some airbrush um, work on there to try and create that lightning effect. Majority of the figure, as you can see, is painted, is spray painted and based with Chaos Black. I put them onto cocktail, uh, not cocktail, hmm, no, cocktail, well, there's cocktail sticks. I suppose that's the best way of putting it. And we've got some corks. These corks you can purchase from Amazon for next to nothing. They're really versatile, they're fantastic. They stay upright when you actually got some spray on there. And you can see from the various different holes, they're great when you stick the cocktail stick in there to try and uh, keep your figure on whatever. If you've got a little standard that's great but i like to use these because these are cheap and you can just put multiple ones on multiple different things i have kept the base separate the base is of course been sprayed up has been sprayed up with a brown spray it's also just a generic brown spray that i've managed to find um and that's just going to make it easier for me to base this model because it's quite a large figure but we'll be getting to that later but if you want to see my basing techniques there's a video of course several videos on my playlist We've got the arms separate, both arms are separate, mainly so we can keep it away from the body. And that way we can even maybe try and do some airbrush effects with this little guy in here. Um, I may have spray made them, I've got all the way in there, but we will correct that soon. I've got the pipe, and the pipe itself is going to be more cloth and material in my head um, than anything else. So I'm actually going to be doing that. I've painted that up mechanical standard grey so we can get some lighter colours on there. We might be using some layers and some shades to try and do that rather than actually using uh, airbrush, but never know. And of course, you've got the nozzle, which I'm keeping separate because that'll just be easier. And you've got the main guy himself. And one of the reasons I keep the main guy separately is so I can get to a lot of his legs. A lot of the equipment is going to be in the way, but this way we are going to be able to keep his legs separate. Um... We are going to be doing a traditional goblin green for the old uh, face like we've done in the past couple of videos. I'll come to that and the alternative paints that you can use if you don't have goblin green because it is quite a rare one to get hold of nowadays, I think. Not checked. Um, but this guy, we're not going to be doing airbrush for his goblin green like we've been doing on, like we did on Snick Rock. This one's going to be more of a, uh, probably more, well actually I might airbrush it in because I've got the paint ready. Um, but we are wanting a lot of differences in this. This is going to be a very different model, to be honest. In fact, what we might do is start off with the Xenophil highlight. So, let's get some paints out and let's go. get cracking. So one of the first things we're going to do, we're going to get our lead belcher. And on all of the uh, parts that we've got separate, so this little bit here, the actual weapon, the turny turny fuzzy thing, knock it over like some form of dominoes and even on the mech boy himself because of course he's got quite a lot on the actual back we're going to dry brush the metal straight on the black normally i've got blue tech under these and i'm going to show you what i mean and this is going to create kind of like a a very odd looking metallic it will not be too odd but it's an old Sounds like a bit of a second edition when you wanted a quite a, a dark metallic. You used to just, I think it was called bolt gun metal. So, I'm gonna hold it there because of course the uh, pipes are there and we're just gonna, all over, get that, kind of quick. That goes on. 
it's going to give us this faded metal and eventually I'm going to punch that block in the face. Yes, I have abandoned it. So any, well, I'm saying any metal areas, it's nearly the whole model. So make sure that it's not a very sort of like heavy dry brush and just make sure that you get all the areas that's going to be metal and give them a dry brush with a lead belt chair. Next up, just a quick dry brush of Stonehorse Silver, trying to get more towards the edges of the dry brush that we've already done. Again, just doing it rough. We are painting oaks after all, don't have to do it nice and clean. Now that should be pretty quick to do. So we're gonna move on to Screaming Bell. And what we're gonna do with Screaming Bell, is we're gonna do the same technique. We're gonna dry brush it. And we're gonna pick areas. So we're gonna get a smaller dry brush. And we're gonna pick areas to dry brush this on. So that one particular panel Get another the mic. Now to the end. Don't be too worried about being messy. And on here, I want to be a bit more specific when it comes to this particular part. I'm going to, those little coils, they're going to get the dry brush treatment. <laughs> yes, I know. Again, don't be too worried if you're going to be a little bit messy. And on the hand, I'm calling it the hand because it's got the arm. I'm gonna do it on the jaw. So just like I say, only one or two pieces. You don't have to be lots. Just pick random pieces to uh, dry brush some screaming bell onto. Now, one of the things to do once uh, we've got the dry brushes on is we are going to start slapping some washes on. Now I've got Rykel Thrash Shade, I've got some Nuln Oil, and I've got some Agrax Earth Shade. And what I'm gonna do, I've got an older brush and I'm just gonna slap this on in bits. And then before it dries, I'm just going to wash my brush, get the normal oil, slap that on in bits. Just making sure not to contaminate the pot, as it were. And uh, you're going to know what I'm going to say. Just try and uh, press that on the camera for a while. And then clean your brush and that grabs it. So you've got a very varied look of shades and oils. So it kind of kind of looks a little bit greasy. Now splashing on like this can sometimes mean that you need to let it dry properly. Hopefully I've got something to hold on to. So as long as it don't fall over, I'll let that dry and then we will come back into it. So while we're waiting for the inks and washes to dry on our new metallic pieces, we're going to get the pipe. Now don't forget that there's a little tiny bit of the pipe on um, the... Um, back of a shock attack gun, so that will need doing once of course everything's dry over there. 
But we've got three old school Citadel colours. You've probably seen me use these on the last few videos. I'm, I'm quite enjoying using them. I also need to use them before I can no longer use them and or get rid. So they will be making an appearance quite often. But snake bite leather. So I've got a conversion chart for you. If you haven't got all the snake bite leather, it's Balor Brown. Or if you're using um, some Vallejo colours, it could be Cobra Leather, Leather Brown or Brown Sand. Graveyard Earth is Steel Legion Drab. Now Steel Legion Drab can be either um, Earth or US Field Drab from Vallejo. And Desert Yellow, unfortunately I can't find a corresponding Desert Yellow to Vallejo, but that is effectively Talan Sand. So these colours, the reason I've got about three different colours is we're going to paint this in, in three of these different tints as if it's three different canvas. And the fact that it's a particular type of canvas means that we can use one type of wash and one type of dry brush highlight. So we've got some speed going on as well. Right now, this is going to be done in a very random pattern. It's not going to be sort of concentrated uh, all over. It's got that'll be one colour, that'll be another, that'll be a third, that'll be another colour. And try to make sure that none of them are matching. So this bit, graveyard, that bit does it yellow, that bit snake bite leather, and then so on and so forth. So I've got my three colours on. I've got my shade in my hand, which is seven, 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 mm, sepia, not the one. So we're just going to coat the whole entirety. I've got a, uh, a small, medium shade brush here. And we're just going to, again, same as what we're doing with the other stuff, we're just going to coat all of this when the lid stays open because it's about to shut. There we go. In a seraphine sepia tone. So guys, that's finally dried. It did take a while and unfortunately I've been at work in between. And now I'm just going to get some more strong horse silver now that it's dried and we're going to put, we're going to kind of just try and lightly dry brush this metal work. So dry brush all the metal work now that uh, everything is, is dry up. I should give you Give you the look and feel that we're actually after. It's a shame I can't paint a whole model like this. I quite like this. And once that's been done, you need to get some tyrant skull. Make sure you wash your brush properly. Put that on there. We are using this paint, of course, because it is a metallic. Once you've washed your brush out, make sure you change your water. And don't forget, we're going to need to sort that. Now, I have gone ahead and used War Green, which is War Boss Green in the cur current range, I believe, and I have coated my guy here, and of course all the other green, and that's going to be required. I know I'll get the line cock and everything else sorted. We'll be doing some crazy effects with some airbrushing later on, um, and I've got the arm done. That is actually still drying, which is why I've gone forward. I've not. I've not dry brushed this yet, but you still need to do that. I've not dry brushed it yet because I'm still waiting for the rest of it to dry. So I might as well get it all done together. So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's get some more ink on here. So we've got some oak flesh wash. Now, if you can try and get hold of a dark, darkish green ink, this will be a good substitute. If not, try using some um, camo shade, I believe it is. Not dragon enough night. Coelia green shade from workshop. You might have to put it on just a couple of times because it doesn't games workshop's newer shades and not as intense. Although that might actually be the appropriate colour that you're after. And what I might do is I'll paint this guy up in Coelia so we can see what the difference. Coelia, whatever it is, green shade, so we can see the difference. 
so what I'm going to do with this is just to paint it on everything so all of it gets done anything that's got green skin on there just be careful not to get it on anything else because it is quite a dark ink no knocking everything over that's what happens when you've got a camera in front of your face make sure it doesn't pull too much and don't worry about what it looks like on some of the other areas we are going to be going over this so I'll leave the gobble on the ground because we're going to be doing that with a different one so just paint the rest and now I'll, I'll paint that up and then we'll see what it looks like so let's get some more green on so i'm going to show you the difference then on the arms it's i mean it could be due to age but actually the color of green shade is not it's not done too bad it's actually it looks quite dark um this has come through a bit blotchy but it's because i'm just spreading it out and then we're going to be painting over so i'll paint over that one as well we'll see what happens back on with the goblin green i've watered it down and we're just kind of like layering it on here just making sure that you you know you're leaving recesses don't put it on too thick make sure it's nice and thin and what we're doing is just building up those uh, that color so we're building it back up we've broken it down we're going to build it back up and if you've not already done so do you tyrant skull just be careful when doing it to the neck you just want a bit you don't want loads hopefully I've not painted those pipes yet so I've got a bit of camo green I've mixed it in with my thin goblin green It needs to be mixed in with the thin because if you can see it's quite thick. I'm making sure it's nice and thin and glaze like. So we are just just gonna start creating sort of like that muscle definition. Just putting a little bit on. The same to the grot when you can. And then we're just layering it up. So do, a, do this a couple of times. Make sure it's nice and layered up so you actually got, you can start to see the color kind of shift. And then let it dry and come back because you might need to do it again once it's dried because of course it will always look different. Looks nice and translucent now. Try it on the grot because the skin tends to be a lot more light. I use a lot more. So get to it. Stop gulping at me. We'll come back in a bit. So next up we're going to get some browns and reds done on this particular figure. I'm wanting his trousers to be like a deep red, um, including the backpack and any of the belts. We're going to be doing the traditional sort of leather colour that you've seen me do quite a few times on the channel. We've got a leather and sort of like his glove might be red. Long cloth. Probably going to do that red because it's just a nice easy colour, especially with the orcs, it contrasts very well and stands out. So both of them are going to need a base and this base in colour you're going to require is going to be just Rhinox Hide. So crack it open, get your brush out, get it nice, get it nice and thin and then start basing up all of the areas that you intend to be red and brown. Now. My finger keeps dropping, so 
if you want, because of course we're using a wet palette, stick the other colours on there. Now the brown, I'm using Morn Fang as the highlight, and I've got Evil Sun Scarlet as the next stage for the red. None of my pots going to remain open today, this is it. My floor's collapsed, maybe. I've got it for. I think none of them do. It's quite amazing. Try and keep these as separate as I can while I'm doing this. Start putting it on. Mix a little bit. Try and get that leather scratch effect going. I do have a little bit of scrag brown if I decide I'm going to need to take it a little bit higher with the brown. And we've also got I got first shade. But we're going to put the first layer on. We're going to put on. Keep repeating myself. We're going to put on the rhinoxide and then highlight, build up highlights, and then we're going to coat it all in Agrax Earth Shade. Okay, so I've let the uh, let it dry, I've put some layers of red on, and I've also Agrax Earth Shaded it, and I've put some um, just pure Evil Sun Scarlet into the mouth as well. Um, and then of course I've done that on both models, that's so that you can put in the teeth later and it makes it the base of it look like it's got some gum. Um, and then I did a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade in that as well. What we're going to do again is just go back to the Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to go back to the Morn Fang Brown and we're going to very lightly, and um, we're going to do, well it's you know, quite wet, I'm just going to load up my wet palette and then I'm going to use, yeah. Nearly put my brush into my tea. That's never a good idea. And then we're going to water these down. Now that I've got my red finned, I'm just going to get a very small detailing brush. And I'm going to pick out the bits that I'm wanting to have highlighted. Again, don't forget oh, with a lot of these, especially when you're doing it with a wet palette, it will dry darker than what you've put it on. So if you think to yourself, oh, that looks really bright, let it dry. You might find yourself adding another layer. Don't let it pull all like that. And then on the teeth, just you can use a bigger brush if you want, but just don't bother. Sorry, I did the teeth and then I realised I don't need to do the teeth, it's just a tongue. Just a tongue and a little bit on that. Right, got the rest of that back to do. Once we've done the red, of course, you're doing exactly the same with the brown. But with the brown, try and create sort of what looks like scratch marks across the leather. So just try and go in one particular direction when adding it, because you just want. As if it's been. Chipped, and you might need to do the brown, the leathery pits, you might need to do them a couple of times. So I've reinforced, I even use a little bit of scrag brown just to add a little bit more detail to some of the leather scratches. I've now got some shabti bone. We're going to paint those teeth. We're also going to use a bit of it to paint the stitching because I'm wanting the stitching to be quite light. Compare, I know there's a bit of green in that, but you don't get it in there. Compared to the rest of the stitches down, the, you know, the actual down the trousers. So with the teeth, I'm just going to paint them, leaving pretty much the bottom bit 
Superman. That way, I'm going to get that sort of gun effect that I'm after. Now, I'm going to do the majority of these teeth off camera simply because I'm wanting to get my face right up in here when I'm doing it, only because I don't want to. I don't want to mess this up. Oh, well, if I'm not careful. Now, regarding the stitch, just get your fin brush out again. This is a uh, size triple zero, I think. Worn away, so I don't know. Making sure I've got that. Plenty of water. When you're using thinner brushes, they always make it a little bit more runny because it doesn't dry out on the tip that way. And then these stitches. Just painting them stitches with your shed tool. Just make the stitches pop out. Right, let's get the rest of those teeth done. So I've painted the teeth on, and now we're just going to start doing some pipes. So I'm just going to do a generic pipe on all of them. I've got some Mechanica Standard Grey on my wet palette. I've already watered it down. And I'm just going to paint. I've actually got the wrong brush for this. I didn't realise there's metal pieces. Um, just paint all the pipe work on your weapons and any, any, or any other particular part of the model. Now I've got my Mechanicus on there, we're going to get some Black Templar going. So I've done all my uh, little cables and everything else in the Mechanicus Standard Grey. We're just now going to paint those cables using the Black Templar. Take one out there for a sec. Keep trying to put them onto those stands. And this will be a really quick way of getting this black done without us having to do a lot of messing around. Because it'll flow into all the recess. Gurgling and then this bit, just try and keep the metallic bits free. Now, regardless of what Games Workshop say, if you do need to go over a couple of bits with this, do so because it's not doesn't run into everywhere sometimes perfectly and it might go over other things that you don't want it to go over if you can hear me because I'm kind of mumbling right my favorite fr phrase let's crack on okay we are skipping ahead a few steps I've got some McCrag blue focus god damn it and I have put that on the electrical balls on the spinny thing and the reason we've changed the background is that I'm going to be using my airbrush for this. Now you can use your dry brushing techniques, not a problem. I prefer to try and get this with an airbrush. I have coated this in parafilm. There we go. It's a laboratory film. It's really good for actually covering up because it doesn't stick to the model. It just adheres to itself. Um, so I've coated it in parafilm so that I don't accidentally get it on any other area apart from the areas I intend to get it on. 
I'll also be doing something with the funnel um, on the uh, model. I've actually glued the model together while it's drying at the moment because I've had to do something to the base. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to proceed. So we're going to be looking at Temple Guard Blue. We're going to put him back into the airbrush and then we'll slowly be applying elements of Game Air White. And then I've got these, these little tubs from uh, Green Stuff World. The light on this is terrible. Um, it's because it's, it's not the right one. There we are. It's from Green Stuff World. It's basically little tubs that you can post up into. So if I need to keep it for any edge highlighting, once I've got right to the end, I can. Um, sometimes it's nice to do so. So let's get cracking on this. And there we are, look, there we've got, we've got our spinny, lightning shaded, bluey balls. Right, let's get all this assembled. There we are. We have an assembled shock attack on. Uh, that's just a little bit of airbrush on the Telesar blue. I'll just put it in there, it's just giving it a nice effect. And there we go, and of course I've done the lens on the eye, that is a uh, just a standard lens technique which you can actually find, the, the base is still drying, hence why I am holding it between a thumb and forefinger, I know you shouldn't be but I've got my gloves on, so we're all good, I just need to varnish that up, but that is it, it's come out quite well is that, to be honest with you, and thanks very much for watching guys, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you enjoy the content. Um, thank you very much for keeping uh, this channel alive, all the viewers, all the subscribers. Uh, we couldn't really do it without you. Um, I know I don't get a huge amount of views, but it's fun to do, and the views I do get are positive, especially over the long run. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.